untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today we're taking a look at a green-white humans deck that's featuring cards not only from March of the Machine but also from Aftermath. And the main reason to play green and what could otherwise be a mono-white deck is Augur of Autumn, a 3 mana 2-3, says we can look at the top card of our library at any time and play lands from the top of our library as well. And as long as we have Coven enabled, meaning we control three or more creatures with different powers, we may cast creature spells from the top of our library as well. And that's the goal, to eventually take over with our Augur of Autumn, especially when paired with Catilda, a 2 mana 1-1 one, one with protection from werewolves, saying human creatures we control can tap, adding 1 mana of any of this creature's colors. So now all our creatures turn into mana creatures, it becomes much easier to keep casting creatures off the top, and we can potentially use Catilda's 6 mana ability to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each creature we control, it can also be necessary to give us those 3 different powers, because otherwise we have a lot of 1 and 2 powered creatures throughout the deck and the 4-powered creature that we're hoping to find every game is a Knight Errant of Eos, a 5-mana 4-4, but it has Convoke, so we can tap our untapped creatures to help cast it, even if those creatures have Summoning Sickness, so we can often cast Knight Errant alongside a few 1-drops in the same turn, which is quite nice. And when the Knight Errant enters the battlefield, we can look at the top 6 cards of our library and then reveal up to 2 creature cards with mana value X or less from among them, where X is the number of creatures that Convoked Knight Errant and put those cards into our hand. So the goal with Knight Errant is always to tap at least three creatures to cast it with Convoke, that way we can find our three drops with the ability, and as you can see we've got a few nice three drops that the Knight Errant can hit, and then of course in the late game we can tap five creatures, so we can potentially find additional copies of Knight Errant itself to keep the value chain going. And then our other creatures include Brutal Cathar, the main removal spell in the deck to exile an opposing creature, can also transform back and forth as it switches between day and night. And then we also have two copies of Torrents, a 2-2 with training, so if this attacks alongside a larger creature like maybe your Knight Errant, it can pick up a plus one plus one counter, and whenever we cast a creature spell, we get to create a 1-1 green and white human soldier creature token with training, so that 1-1 can also easily pick up additional plus one counters. And then all these extra tokens that we're generating with Torrents will synergize very nicely with Catilda, as all those tokens will start making mana, and also with our Lunark Veteran, which is one of our key cards when facing the Monoret Aggro Bird decks, a 1-1 one -one saying whenever another creature enters the battlefield under our control, we gain one life. So now if we're going off with our Augur of Autumn and Catilda making mana, we can now also gain life so we're not going to get burnt out. And then Hopeful Initiate, another creature with training, a 1-mana one 1-2 one that can also remove plus 1 counters from our team to destroy an artifact or enchantment can also come up. And then Recruitment Officer, a 1-mana 2-1 that can find additional soldiers if we activate the 4-mana ability. And there's quite a few soldiers throughout the deck, despite it being mainly a humans deck. We've got Officer itself, we've got the Copper Code Vanguard, and this is a new addition from Aftermath. A 2-2 giving other humans we control 1 extra power and a Ward 1. Then there's also Thalia, which taxes non-creature spells. Of course, no non-creature spells in our deck, so it's going to be a one-sided effect. A 2-1 with First Strike, also very good against Monoret, as it will tax all their removal spells. And a 2-1 First Strike also blocks a lot of the two-powered haste creatures in their deck. And that's another soldier we can find with Officer. And then, of course, Brutal Cathar, also a soldier. So we've got a decent hit rate with Officer if we don't have anything else going on. And then our late game, of course, consists of taking over with our Augur of Autumn, but playing a few Copper Code Vanguards to pump the team or activating Catilda can get there, and we can also chain together multiple Knight Errands to take over. So the late game can be quite nice when we're not facing too many sweeper effects. And then our mana base needs a few green-white untapped dual lands, which are important when we're trying to curve out while still having double green for Augur of Autumn. And of course Catilda making green mana can help there as well, but we've got four copies of Courtyard, Naming Human, Razor Verge Thicket as a nice fast land, and then the Brush Land, another untapped dual early, and then the Farmland will come into play untapped later in the game. And then Boseju and Aiganjo, also important interaction, especially when we have quite a few legendaries to give them a discount and four basic planes. I also considered Hamlet Vanguard as a potential 3-drop in this deck, since it could be another great way to enable the Coven on Augur of Autumn as another large creature to complement our 1 and 2 powered creatures, but ended up with too many 3-drops otherwise, and I think Augur is just that important that I want to play 4 copies, but certainly a card you could consider, and in some meta games it might line up better. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games, since See how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, and seems quite nice if we can curve out Veteran, Thalia, Torrents, and then Knight Errant tapping three creatures. 
against the red deck, the life gain from Veteran will come in handy as well. Is their opponent on mono reds with Adversary hitting us for 3. Thalia also a good blocker for etching. And then it will tax their burn spells. Don't think Veteran's blocking under any circumstance, so may as well hit for one. And yeah, Officer, we could also potentially cast in the same turn that we Convoke Knight Errands. That's kind of a free one drop. Another Adversary, so they don't seem to have a great answer to Thalia. Just hit us for four. So now we could go Officer plus Initiate plus Knight Errant, or we could play Torrents first and then make a million 1-1 one -one tokens, which will also gain a lot of life with Veteran. And their priority target is potentially still Thalia anyways. I will run out I Gancho to avoid taking damage. And pass it back. Now if they kill Thalia, we will take a bit of a beating. But then Torrents plus Veteran will be great. Okay, Raichu and an all-out attack. Never mind, so they're gonna get a counter, have a bunch of 3-3s. Three so if I take it all, I'm taking 10 damage. But then next turn, we can gain a lot of life back. Just have to be careful that our creatures aren't all tapped for Convoke. Yeah, I'll take it. Farmland's good too. So, play Officer, trigger Torrents, gain some life. Play Initiates. And then we can Convoke Knight Errant for 5 potentially, so we can find additional Knight Errants. Definitely tap Veteran, and then probably the 1-1 one -one tokens. Thalia could still be a good blocker. Torrents is unlikely to want to attack here or block. And then initiate over officer, perhaps. And then we found lots of goodies, including Augur and a Vanguard, which we can still run out. Trigger Torrents again. Okay, and now we should be stable. Unless her opponent can blow up some key creatures. And then Augur can take over. Squeeze fine. Is it time for a desperation attack? Yep. Raiju will deal quite a bit of damage here. But now we've got a three powered first ranking Thalia to take out Raiju. Can block Squee. Trade for Adversary, block here, eat a 1-1, and then take 4. That could be fine, could jump and save myself a bit more damage. Don't think we're losing from this position. Start with Augur, see what's on top. I didn't do the math to see if we could just kill the opponent on the backswing, that's also possible. Can play a land for free. And play Officer. And yeah, her opponent has seen enough, awesome, so good to see the power of Torrens alongside Veteran. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand seems keepable. Ideally, we pick up another creature we can play on turn 3, so we can save the Convoked Knights until later. Because we ideally want to tap 3 creatures with Convoke, so we can find our powerful 3-drops. Opponent Grixis Colors, so Thalia should be effective at least. And Harvester might take it out, and then we've got a backup. So, don't really want to trade Officer. Let's just play a Courtyard on Human, play Thalia and pass. And then we'll see if they want to 
take out my Thalia. And then I'll probably just play another one. Alright, get to attack for two. Our opponent might be sitting on a counter spell. But it's going to be a go for the throat first. So it's becoming difficult to convoke out Knight Errant for full value, so we might have to play a smaller one. Opponent digs with a blood token, the rest is not going to be very effective in the matchup. Alright, Catilda was a nice pickup. So I can play Catilda. Could still play Brutal Cathar, or we can wait to maybe exile a Shieldred with it. I think I will play Brutal Cathar just so we can convoke Knight Errant next turn. And then we can always switch between day and night to potentially exile a problematic creature. Corpse Appraiser is fine. Now we have to be careful to actually convoke Knight Errant instead of using Catilda's ability for mana. Because then we don't get as much value. Alright, so. Could play another Brule Cathar on Corpse Appraiser, although I'm not in a hurry to get rid of it. There might be shield roots in our future, which uh, we would rather exile. So play Knight Errant, and then make sure to tap for Convoke, tap for Convoke, tap for Convoke. And then we should find some more goodies. Alright, Cathar and Vanguard. So I can play Vanguard. Do I play out Iganjo? I don't think I do. Our opponent knows about Brutal Cathar in hand. And now it turns into a 3-3 first strike. So we have a couple options. Don't mind attacking with everyone since we have Iganjo to clear the Corpse Appraiser. And then they might kill Vanguard to shrink our team down. But it's not gonna matter. And go for the throat Knight Errands. Opponent's gonna have to pay Ward. Of course, if we play Brutal Cathar right now, it is still night time. So it would not exile Corpse Appraiser, but it's also something we want to avoid doing, since then if they can kill the Brutal Cathar, they can get more value. And then play Initiates. We can keep it night time. Our opponent's under quite a bit of pressure. There's a Thalia tax, a Ward tax. They know about a Brutal Cathar in hand still. So if they try to double spell to present some creatures, that may not work out. So first cut down. And then now they might try and take out Thalia. They could do it at instant speed in our turn to keep it nighttime. Vanguard's not a bad pickup. So how about we play Vanguard, tapping Catilda. Although they're so likely to take out Thalia at this point that maybe I should just tap Thalia for mana. And play Vanguard. They'll maybe kill Thalia in response. They don't. Alright, play another Cathar. Attack for a bunch. This will switch it back to daytime. Better points at one. So, unless they've got a board wipe, we should be fine. Shieldred's not gonna save them. And our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems fine. Plenty of one drops to enable an early convoke on Knight Errant. Which one drop first? Probably Recruitment Officer. Unless we're up against Mono Red and I want to gain more life, but in the meantime, we can hit for two. Opponent is on Mono Red, it seems. Cathar's nice too. So, Veteran into Initiates. Hit for two. And then next turn, either play Cathar to exile a larger creature because of the plus one counter, or we can convoke Knight Errant, tapping three creatures. Swiss Spear picks up a plus one counter. And another one. That one we can block. So 
So I don't feel compelled to play Brutal Cathar just yet. Can convoke Knight Errant. And then still have a mana left over. Okay. And we found Augur and Katilda. Think I'll take those over a second Cathar. Since this is really the combo we're looking for, Katilda to generate a ton of mana and then Augur to play stuff off the top. So if the Knight Errant can hold off an attack here, that would be great, but opponent can probably finish it off with a burn spell. So if I block the two powered Swiss Spear and they have two instant speed spells, they could get it up to a 4-5 and essentially kill this for free. So either blocking etching or the smaller Swiss Spear makes a little bit more sense. I'm okay if they finish off my Knight Errant, but at least I want to force them to do it. Getting rid of etching means at least if Veteran dies, I'll still get the Phantom. So maybe that's better. The Lightning Strike. That's okay. Do we get to untap? So we'll start by playing Katilda. And then... Could play Iganjo first, although... Might be a nice removal effect of access to it later. And then I will need to play Brushland. To be able to play Augur of Autumn afterwards. Do I want to attack to train Initiates? That seems fine. I'll just take the damage from Swiss Spear. And then now Augur of Autumn is definitely our most valuable creature to try and take over the late game. I'm hoping our opponent's not playing a version with the uh, end of festivities to deal one damage to every creature. But a lot of mono red builds have moved away from that card. No longer playing Mechanized Warfare. And I'll just take it here. Opponent with a Stoke the Flames going upstairs. So we take a bunch of damage, but Lunark Veteran should make up for it. Thalia I can not quite cast because we don't have Coven enabled. Yeah, I guess we could activate Katilda, but then we still don't have Coven because then we don't have a 1-1 one -one left. Could of course activate Officer to find Thalia and play it. Yeah, let's activate Officer. Find Thalia. Veteran on top. We also can't quite play here. But let's play Thalia. And then Brutal Cathar exiling Swiss Spear seems fine. Even Devastator can fly over, but luckily still within range of Iganjo dealing 4 damage. So we need to figure out a way to enable Coven. So if I first activate Katilda and then play Veteran, we get there. Let's now play Veteran. Gain some life, and now we can play Torrents and still have white mana for Iganjo with plenty of legendaries to enable the discount. Okay. Back up to seven. Pass turn. So we can survive a Stoke the Flames. Another Devastator, this one for five. So if it weren't for Igancho, we would be toast. And now with double veteran, we should be able to take over pretty quickly. Knight Errant is lovely. I'll play Augur to enable Torrent so we can tap our summoning sick creatures for Convoke. So let's have a look here. And then a land is fine. And Night Errant triggers, finding Augur and Cathar. 
Had I tapped an extra creature, I guess I would have been able to grab another Knight Errant here as well, but that's okay. And uh, yeah, we're gaining a ton of life here, easily out of range from a Devastator and a Burn Spell. Just a question about whether we want to keep playing more stuff to the board, or if we want to get a nice attack in. And our opponent seems to have uh, seen enough here. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand seems promising. Initiate into Thalia, hopefully find a third land so we can keep curving out. Put on a three-color deck. Catilda's not bad, although I think Thalia first is still alright since we're not using the initiate for mana on turn one. And then next turn, Catilda essentially pays for itself. Find another Thalia. It's her opponent on the five-color domain deck, it seems. Yeah, I guess uh, Catilda and then attack to enable training. And then next turn we can use Catilda for mana to cast Torrens. Brutal Cathar is not going to be amazing in the matchup, but can eventually exile an Atraxa. A Leyline Binding goes after Thalia. Good we have a backup here. And an Augur of Autumn we can also cast. So, best case scenario, I play Augur, there's a land on top, I can still play Thalia afterwards. If I play Thalia first, that's basically my whole turn. So I think we try Augur. Perfect. Play Thalia. And our opponent is packing a few sweepers in their deck, like Sunfall. So, especially if they get rid of Thalia, they can cast that at 5 mana. Second Binding also gets rid of Thalia. And uh, go for the Throat takes care of Augur. At least if they're killing all my creatures with spot removal, I'm less worried about a sweeper, I guess. Initiate could also potentially blow up an enchantment if we remove two plus one counters, but currently only have the one. So play Torrents, and then can afford to pay a life. Could also play Cathar just for the added pressure, trigger Torrents, that might be alright. And then the extra token, picking up a plus one counter through training, can also enable hopeful initiate. Invasion for ramp. So next turn is when we could see a powerful 7-drop like Atraxa or Itali. So we've got quite a few options here, all the way from uh, trying to get another plus one counter through training to activate initiates, blow up a leyline binding. Could also activate Katilda to put plus one counters on the team. The training happens. Might as well let damage happen first. And then I think I should just use Initiate now. Now it will switch to night time. So Brutal Cathar may not be able to come down to exile an opposing creature. But there's not much we could do about that other than playing another Brutal Cathar, which kind of defeats the purpose. Itali, okay. And our opponent hit a late on arms, which they cannot cast because of the Thali attacks. It's free, but they still have to pay one extra mana. And on our side, they found a Lunark Veteran, which we can now exile. And an all out attack should do it. Awesome. Close one here against the five color domain deck. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hands got potential. Thalia into a Brutal Cathar. No one drop, so it's going to be a little harder to convoke Knight Errant. And a turn one Kumano, so opponent on Mono Red Aggro. Definitely one of the more popular decks since the standard bannings. Not only in Best of 1, but now also Best of 3. And a Phoenix, so opponent's playing with a few battles perhaps. Could exile it with a Brutal Cathar. Seems like a good solution to it. And then I'll hang back with Thalia to block the hasty etching. The Vanguard can protect our Brutal Cathar. So they don't have any great attacks except for the 1-1 Phoenix chick. 
and a Torrance could be quite fun. So could risk playing Torrance first. I guess we don't have the mana to go Vanguard plus Knight Errant, so yeah, Torrance it is. So now there's three creatures that they kind of want to take out. Invasion of Regatha, perfect answer to Thalia, dealing one damage to it. And I'm not going to trade here. So our opponent gets to transform their Disciples, which is also quite scary. But let's see, if I go Thalia plus Vanguard, we can still Convoke Knight Errant, thanks to all the tokens. And I'll tap a Brutal Cathar since we might be able to play one drop afterwards here. Find another Cathar and probably Catilda over Officer. Well, the Officer could be a nice mana sink, admittedly. Yeah, let's grab Catilda, can add plus one counters to the team. So, big turn for the opponents. And it looks like they don't have the answers lined up and their opponent concedes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand is fine. Turn 1 Officer, turn 2 Thalia, and turn 3 Augur, and then a Knight Iron to refuel up against Red Aggro. Yeah, definitely one of the more popular matchups in the format at the moment. So Thalia and Veteran are definitely key cards in this matchup. Firebrand with a counter could be scary. So, play Augur, and we'll keep everything back. Next turn, play a couple 1-drops, play maybe a free Knight Errant tapping the whole team, we'll see. We're likely to lose a few creatures this turn. Swiss Spear, so they can still play a 1-mana removal spell because of Thalia. Okay, Thalia can block, so... Probably fine to line up some trades since we have both Augur and Knight Errant to play a long game. They might finish off Augur, but that's alright when we have a Knight Errant coming up. And I play with Fire to finish it off. Alright. Our opponent's board disintegrates. And Thalia can attack since it's unlikely to hold off a Swiss Spear. And then if we can tap three creatures for Knight Errant, that would be ideal. No blocks. And a veteran can be played first. May as well tap Thalia in case we pick up another one drop I can cast. Don't think the two damage is super relevant, and yeah, our opponent sees a writing on the wall. Knight Errant is just too much value here. Not only a 4-4, but two more creatures that they'll have to fight through while we gain life, while they're taxed by Thalia. So yeah, the Mono Red matchup seems quite winnable if you get off to a decent start with Veteran and Thalia especially. And then a 4-4 that draws two cards is a lot of value for the red deck to fight through. So overall, I've been quite happy with how this green-white deck turned out. There are still rough matchups out there, especially the domain deck, if it can keep you off uh, having a full board by casting sweepers like Sunfall and eventually taking over with an Atraxa. That's going to be hard to compete with, but sometimes you can be fast enough and have enough interaction with Thalia and maybe a well-timed Brutal Cathar to get rid of a big creature that you can still out-aggro them. But luckily sweepers are not all that popular because of the presence of Mono Red Aggro, which has a bunch of haste creatures and burn spells, which can punish sorcery speed sweepers since they can just get on the board again with more creatures to apply pressure. So as long as Mono Red stays popular, I don't expect sweepers to be too much of a concern. And then as a green-white deck, you can try to outgrind other mid-range decks, and then the life gain and taxation effects are also quite good against Mono Red. So this green-white build is in a sweet spot at the moment, but that can easily shift as the metagame develops. Could also see diversifying some of our creatures to have a wider range to enable Coven for Augur of Autumn. So Bond Warden as a 1-drop with possibly zero power, or Intrepid Adversary at 
3 power are good examples that I also highlighted in the introduction. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.